Hey guys, Ashley Whitmer here, and I wanna share with you guys today the top five biggest mistakes that I think people make when they're starting off with a ketogenic lifestyle and diet. Okay, so a ketogenic lifestyle. I know that you're hearing keto a lot lately. I know it's like a buzzword. I know it's everywhere you're turning. Why? First of all, I want to put this out there. If you haven't watched The Magic Pill documentary on Netflix, Amazon, or Hulu, get out there and do that. Research. Education is everything. Educate yourself. There's so much power in having knowledge and knowing how our bodies operate and how things work inside. So I highly recommend doing that if you haven't done so. Today, I want to go over um, just kind of, you know, it's different. I know for myself personally, I went from counting calories, um, counting my portions, portioning all my food into little containers, um, eating on specific, strict diet meal plans. I've done it all and I completely understand the hesitation. When I first found out that what I had to do was eat more fats, I was truly terrified. It goes against every single thing that I've ever known and that I've ever practiced. Of course, your brain is giving you some resistance because it's different from what you know, but I encourage you to get out there, educate yourself, and let me just share with you what I think and what I've seen to be the five biggest mistakes that people make when they're switching over to a ketogenic lifestyle and kind of what what causes them to throw in the towel too soon. So I get it, it's new, it can be overwhelming. So hopefully knowing these things I'm about to share and knowing them ahead of time, it can help you. So number one, and I think that I think that number one is the biggest, it's that people aren't using electrolytes. Electrolytes are so important when you're eating a ketogenic diet. Why, why does this happen? Because your body will flush the electrolytes that you have inside of you a lot when you're eating more in a ketogenic friendly way. You are eliminating so many electrolytes from your body. You're losing sodium, magnesium, and potassium like you've never lost it before. That can dehydrate somebody, anybody so, so fast. It is so important to make sure that you're replenishing yourself. I can go ahead and link in the description the electrolyte tablets that I personally like to use. However, aside from that, if you don't replenish, you are going to get the keto flu. You're going to feel nauseous. You're gonna feel tired. You're gonna feel headaches. You're gonna feel um, stomach aches. You are not going to feel energy. You're gonna feel opposite of what everybody told you you're gonna feel on the ketogenic lifestyle because your body is begging to be hydrated. So not only is it so important to give yourself those electrolytes, and like I said, I choose to do it in a tablet form. Just make sure that it's done. There's no chance I'm gonna feel like garbage. You need to be sure that you're salting your food. Pink Himalayan salt on everything. Sodium is not the culprit. You're losing so much sodium. You need to replenish that or you will become dehydrated and you will want to quit and throw in the towel. Um, you're gonna need to take, I take a magnesium supplement before bed every single night. Your body is losing that. You need to go ahead and replenish. Um, potassium, potassium enriched foods, nuts, avocado, that is going to help you so much. When it comes to water, you know, everybody thinks they drink enough water. You should be at minimum drinking as many ounces as half of your body weight and then some every single day. There's no such thing as overhydrating yourself when it comes to this. You need to be sure you're doing this or you're going to feel the repercussions of the keto flu and you're going to be miserable until you get out of it. So please do yourself a favor and just make sure that you are hydrating and that you are replenishing your electrolytes. I really believe that's the biggest issue and that's number one. Number two, I think this is the second biggest one. I put these kind of in order to what I how I think they apply most heavily. Number two, not eating enough fats. As I said before, I was terrified for fats. Um, I used to put my fats in a small little container per day, and some days I wouldn't even have any. So the thought of eating a lot of them is really stressful when you get started. You're thinking like, are you sure? Is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? 
the standard American diet is low fat, high carb, which is quite terrifying. Reference back to watching the magic pill. It's quite terrifying. No, it's so hard to let go, but when you're keto, um, eating a keto lifestyle and you're fat adapted, your body is running on fat for fuel, which is what it prefers instead of the glucose. Your brain and your body need the extra fats to run properly. They need that fuel. They want that fuel. You need to get yourself with higher fats in your system to get fat adapted as your body is running through those glucose stores that you have in your body saved up from all of the glucose and all of the carbs you were eating before. And that takes some time. How can we do this? Trust the process. I do have a video I will link um, how to know when you're getting fat adapted and fat doesn't make you fat. I have two that I'll go ahead and link below and I'll pop them up here. Um, little baby steps, eating healthy fats, making sure that you're getting this in your system every single day. The ketogenic lifestyle, the diet itself is high fat, low carb, moderate protein. You need to have high fats, high healthy fats. Stop buying ground turkey. Stop buying turkey bacon. I was doing the same thing. You want the, stop buying the leanest meats. You want the fattiest meats you can find. I know, when I first heard that, I was like, I don't think I can do that. I'm always looking for the leanest stuff. That's what's wrong. That's the problem. You don't wanna do that. You wanna buy the fattier thing. You need to make sure every day that you're getting plenty of healthy fats, olive oils, butter, get the healthy fats in. It is the biggest mistake that I see people do aside from electrolytes, is not getting enough fats because we're so hesitant, because we're so afraid and it goes against everything we've ever known. I get it. Trust the process and educate yourself. Number three, this kind of rolls in from number two, eating too much protein. So I used to do this too. I'm so guilty of uh, past Ashley doing this. Like I said, the ketogenic diet is high fat, low carb, moderate protein. I used to do high protein, low carb, low fat. No wonder I was feeling like crap all the time and I was exhausted and I was stuck in yo-yo dieting back and forth because that's the wrong way to do things. You need to be having moderate protein. That's why in the beginning, it's so good to track. Um, you can track everything in Carb Manager app and MyFitnessPal. Uh, going and figuring out your macros in the beginning is really important. I don't track now that I become accustomed to it, but it did take some time to learn. So tracking in the beginning is honestly the best thing to do because it will show you what you're getting and it will align your macros up for you so you know that you're getting the right amount of protein. That being said, um, an easy way for me to make sure that I hit this target because I am a person who wants to eat higher protein is make one of your meals during the day no protein at all. That way you're, you're implementing um, fats, more fats in that meal than you are the protein. Number four, patience, uh, trusting the process and patience. It takes time. Again, you are taking your body and everything that you knew and everything that you did and you are completely shifting and changing it. Your body is a machine and it takes time to adjust and adapt to that. And you know what? You may experience side effects while you're being patient and knowing that those things are happening because you're depleting the glucose in your body and you're shifting into fat adaption and knowing that it's normal, it helps so much. Some people, they'll start to feel you know, cravings um, right off the bat when they're first adjusting or... Um, you know, they see, and I'll put my video below for the fat whoosh too. They'll start to see weight gain at first instead of weight loss and they'll panic, but it takes time. It, it's patience. Patience is key with this. Um, do not think that if those things happen, you're doing something wrong. You are on the right path and knowing how everything works out. And like I said, knowledge is power. It helps to know those things so that when you, these things are happening, you're not going, oh my gosh, this isn't working. Patience. Have patience and trust the process. And I really believe in my heart that educating yourself and knowing these things, it makes things so much easier. I had a girl tell me I, I was getting really weird breaths, so I had to stop. No, that's good. That's a good side effect. So knowing those things, it can really help so that you're not like throwing up like these flags, like, oh my gosh, something is wrong. I need to stop this. No, everything is perfect. Everything is perfect. And that's why I also um, throw out there my free keto community that's in the link because it's so nice to have the support and to be able to talk these things through while you're adjusting to this huge change. I want to throw a little suggestion out there too. Exogenous ketones are the perfect 
um, thing to just give it a try. I have 10 day trials. You can reach out to me, give it a shot, see how you feel on them. I think you'll be really surprised to learn more about them and to see how they can help. They take those side effects and they throw them away. They help your body get into ketosis. And again, that's another topic for another day, but don't don't discount that. Don't throw it away until you try it. You never know until you try it and you can reach out to me and I can help you get set up with your 10 day trial. Number five, hidden carbs. There are hidden carbs. Reading nutritional labels is huge. You need to make sure that you're not grabbing something that has high carbs and high sugars. Um, it can be mistaken all the time. That's another reason that in the beginning it's so good to track because something like, for example, broccoli, if you're not measuring it and you're having too much, like you can be hiking your carb count to more than what you should be daily um, because you just don't know any better because you think to yourself, oh, it's a vegetable, it's fine. And you don't, you don't realize that it's high in carbs and when you're having it at every single meal, you're actually having too many carbs for the day. So knowing that there are hidden carbs and things and tracking and again, having the group for support is so, so helpful. So again, these were my five things that I see people doing wrong all the time. I really hope that this helped you. Like I said, I believe that when you know these things ahead of time, like off the bat and you're prepared for them, it doesn't seem so um, crazy when things are happening and just knowing that it's normal and it's okay, it really makes a big difference. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please let me know how I can help you. I'm happy to help. And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, please make sure that you do so. I look forward to getting to know some of you guys more. Have a great day.